in this section we're going to be going over optimizing our diet so pretty much understanding what is the most productive diet and what are some brain boosting foods that we can use to supplement and to add to living like an optimized human being as well as eating like an optimized human being so without further ado Let's get started. The definition of a productive diet is a diet for optimal productivity throughout the day should provide your body with the energy and nutrients it needs to support physical and mental performance. We want to eat in a way that benefits our physical and our mental performance, right? So here are some key components to consider whenever we're planning out our diet. And we're going to start off with the first one. And right away, I'm going to break some barriers by stating that consuming adequate amount of protein is obviously essential for having the neurological as well as the physical aptitude to be able to perform at a certain level. However, consuming adequate amount of protein does not mean consuming excessive amounts of protein, which is something that we're seeing in society today by training individuals and telling them that they need to be consuming a ton of protein, which as we've learned, if we go back to how much protein do I need, isn't really the case. So using this table, we only need around one gram of protein per kilogram of body weight, up to 2.2 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. So for me at 200 to 215 pounds, I need around 190 to 215 grams of protein at the very max. Anything above that, my body is really not going to use because simply because muscles just don't repair that quickly. And by consuming excessive amounts of protein, what we can notice is that there are a ton of damaging components tied into our protein consumption that we talked a little bit about in the previous section, like saturated fats, trans fats, and added cholesterols that actually take away from our mental performance as well as our physical performance by restricting the flow of blood. Now, good sources of protein include lean meats, fish, eggs, dairy, legumes, and nuts, but just remember that all originating sources of protein come from plants, so the number one source of protein is the protein that is going to cause the least amount of inflation towards your body, which is plant-based protein. The next step is consuming complex carbohydrates. And the reason behind why we want to consume complex carbohydrates over refined sugars and sugary snacks is because complex carbohydrates include a ton of healthy fibers as well as a ton of minerals and vitamins within their consumption. So with fruits and vegetables and fortified ingredients like that, you're getting a ton of minerals and you're not really getting very high levels of inflammation, which we can see in refined carbohydrates. At the gist of it, you can still get away with consuming refined carbs however the main source of the carbohydrates that we're consuming is ideally aimed at to be complex carbohydrates afterwards proper hydration now this is a step that very few individuals talk about but i think that it is quintessential towards making sure that we're optimized as possible and that we're avoiding as much brain fog as possible in the mornings and throughout the day and that is done through adjusting our hydration and adjusting the quality of the water that we're putting into us we're made up of water right there's so many things that depend on how hydrated we are that function within the body and if we're not meeting those optimal levels of hydration we're just not going to be firing at that peak optimal level and obviously if you see somebody healthy they usually have a giant water bottle with them and that is a key step when it comes down to water consumption, drinking lots of water. Something that's more important than drinking lots of water is drinking clean water. And I'm not sure if you're aware, but tap water as well as numerous other bottles are low in mineral concentrations. So minerals that we find in fruits and vegetables and stuff like this are usually low in water, which we're assuming to be high in those ingredients because, because those ingredients like magnesium, they're naturally found in our water in the springs so we want our water to be fortified in certain minerals and to be less tainted with minerals such as fluoride copper zinc ammonia etc so there are several solutions to this they're obviously range in stages you can have a full osmosis water system which is what you're seeing right here which goes under your sink and it filters and it purifies and it cleans up your water and then it also adds minerals to it so obviously this is the most expensive option for most people the second step is a water filter or a pitcher a brita or something like a santivia gravity water system which has multi-step stages of filters and then finally the last step is obviously buying healthy clean mineralized water such as Gerolsteiner, which is obviously natural spring water and contains a lot of minerals so we want to be avoiding water that has a ton of ammonia, 
fluoride and damaging heavy metals tied into it and if we're made up of water we really want to be aware of how much bad quality water we're drinking right because it compounds over time we're drinking cups and cups and cups gallons of this stuff a week so imagine what the compounding effects of it are the next step is obviously getting in a ton of healthy fats to promote heart health brain function hormone production etc and again these are unsaturated or polyunsaturated fats we do not want to be consuming fats such as trans fat saturated fat and added cholesterols those types of fats do nothing for the body so we want to be avoiding them at pretty much all costs again avoiding excessive amounts of sugar and caffeine a little tip for a lot of us here is once you wake up, you want to avoid having coffee for around an hour to an hour and a half after waking up because the adenosine, which is the hormone pretty much for telling our bodies when to go to sleep when it's tired, doesn't naturally flush out of the body right after we wake up. It's still in there. And if we consume caffeine right away, this will actually trigger the adenosine to come back up at around midday. So to avoid that evening, afternoon, caffeine crash just have coffee a little bit after waking up again andrew huberman talks about this stuff a lot and then obviously the final step is consider supplementation if needed one of the most important components to this phrase up here is if needed there are a ton of supplements that can help us out ranging from iron to mushrooms to vitamin d3 to vitamin b12 and they all depend on the type of diet that you're currently eating and what you're having on a day-to-day -day basis and in the next section, we're going to dive deeper into understanding supplementation and what are the potential benefits of eating certain supplement-backed foods.